It was something you mentioned earlier, Christopher, and I wonder if it's related to some of the things my colleagues just um, referred to. You mentioned that in the elections around the world uh, that these various companies, AIQ in particular, had been involved with, one of the, the main influences and the main way they made money was through influence brokering. I wonder if you could s explain what that is. And I'm asking, is there a more sinister side to this? This isn't just about influence and affecting elections and the kick of the academic side. Is there a more sinister money-making side linked to all of this that we haven't yet uncovered? Yes. So um, you don't actually make a ton of money working on, on politics, um, particularly in you know, a small island nation, for example, right? But that island nation may have oil reserves or it may have minerals or, you know, lax labor laws that can be exploited by companies or could have lax labor laws if, if those laws were passed. Um, so part of the business model of SCL is to capture a government, uh, so win an election, you get paid for that, but you don't make a ton of money. Where you actually make money is then going to the minister and introducing the minister to a company, um, and then making deals. Uh, you know, I, I remember deals about. Um, you know, there were different um, companies that were interested in building. You know, new ports or things like that, and in order to get a competitive advantage, you know. If some money goes here, then some money goes here, and then you can introduce you know, the, the, the minister, and if the minister then approves the project, then you get a cut of that deal. Um, the company also, uh, so even, for example, when I was there, um, it wasn't just um, selling influence from a company to a government. Often, they would use fake government projects to also then help support the political aims of, of the, the minister. So for example, um, Alexander Nix uh, met with the Minister of Health of Ghana and offered her um, essentially to provide her uh, with you know, a, a, a large degree of political and campaign services, but they would bill it through the Ministry of Health as um, a, a health research program. And so they approved that. I've also sent documentation to the committee on this. Um, and so, so can I just stop you? Earlier you referred to some of these very wealthy people involved in these companies. Do you think this is really what their driving force is, that they can be big power players on the world, get on the world stage? Yeah, you can be like, you know, a colonial master in a country. You know, sorry, not to sound flippant about it, but it, 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 it is, it felt very much like a privatized colonizing operation. You would go into a country that has underdeveloped civic institutions, you would exploit that, and then, and then make money off of it. Um, and, and that's how they make a lot of their money, it is through exploiting relationships and the fact that there's not a lot of um, oversight in, and government accountability in a lot of these countries. So it's very easy to make money off of that. The key, the key thing is you have to have your guy in power first. 